Are you guys ready to learn everything you need to learn for behind the boat foiling? We're here with Brian Grubb, the legend. He's gonna take you from beginner to completely blow your mind. Let's do this. All right, let's go. Hey, what's up? Brian here. We're out on the boat this morning, and we're gonna go over a few of the basics to get started boat foiling. So obviously the first thing you're gonna need is a foil. Um, the board that I've been riding and that I really like behind the boat is the Lift 4.0 board I got here. Um, and then once you get into the, the mast and wing options, you, you got a few different uh, uh, things available depending on how big you are, depending on how big the wave's gonna be. Um, so I'll just kind of go over like what I've been riding on the boat and what I like, and then we'll kind of talk about um, some of the other options out there. So this setup right here is the 28 inch mast. Uh, and then I have the V2 150 uh, surf wing with the 20 carve and this is a pretty advanced setup you know having the small tail on that it's definitely loose and uh, not a lot of drag back there but it also turns insane and, and gets a lot of speed really quick um, I would recommend this wing you know up to like probably 190 to 200 pounds or so and then you know once you get over the 200 pound mark that 200 v2 is gonna be a really good option I think when you're first learning on the boat having uh, the mid aspect uh, surf wings is the way to go um, the high aspect wings are really fun behind the boat too, but it's a completely different ride on, on the boat. Um, they're awesome to pump the flats, but they do turn a little bit slower and the transitions on the boat wakes are like pretty steep. So you can get a lot of speed really quick. And if you're not ready for it, the HA wings um, just take a little bit of getting used to. So I think if you're first getting started, I would do the V2 surf wings. And then depending on your weight, I would go with either the 150 or the 200. So with the mast, you know, the two options that I like behind the boat are the 28 inch mast and then the 32 inch mast. Uh, this is the 28 here. You know, I've been doing a lot of airs and stuff like that. I like kind of the shorter mast, quicker takeoffs, a little bit easier on the landings. But the 32 mast, I feel like it does give you a lot more power. You have to be conscious of riding the wing higher in the water um, so that it's powered up, but, but you can like load up a ton of speed. And I really like them with the high aspect wings. Um, you know, having that taller mass, you can keep the wing in the water, you can lay more aggressive turns out without the corners of the wings coming out that cause some instability sometimes. So um, it's really just kind of personal preference, um, but it kind of depends on what type of riding you're doing and what wings you're riding to. And, you know, I, I only ride carbon wings. Um, you know, they're just the most responsive and they're super rigid and uh, yeah, they're just super reliable. So I would definitely recommend, you know, definitely getting the, the carbon setups. And then with the wings and the setups, like, I think you, really just by changing the stabilizer on the same like 150 and the 200s, I think that's going to be like your best setup. So, you know, the glide tails like the 32 or the 38 glide is going to be, you know, the most stable. Um, you know, most people when they're first starting out on the boat, the hardest part for them is transitioning from like being on the board to getting the board up and riding. Um, a lot of people are just used to, you know, wake surfing where you're leaning back on the rope and letting the boat pull you up. Where on the foils, we want to have that weight forward and we want to keep that wing from jumping. So. Having the bigger stabilizer is gonna just like lock in the tail and then we really just kind of focus on like keeping our weight forward and, and making sure our stance is kind of in front of the mast to like keep the board down. Because once you get that transition from, you know, getting the start and getting the board nice and flat and riding, then from there like is pretty easy. So, but in my experience, you know, just that first part, like when you first get powered up from the boat, um, that's what we're gonna be focusing on a lot today. So another thing a lot of people are talking about is how much volume of the board you should be riding when you're learning or just when you're riding behind the boat in general. So there's a lot of options out there. Um, a couple things to think about. Um, you know, the lower volume boards are easier to sink, easier to kind of get the board under the water, um, which is nice behind the boat when you're doing the starts. Um, anywhere from like 18 to probably like 30 liters is pretty easy to sink. Um, like this board right here is the 4.0 30 liter. Um, you want to have like a little bit of nose on the board, especially when you're first learning. Like you see a lot of like really small boards, three six, three eight, small stuff. Um, and on the boat, you just don't have a lot of nose, so you really got to know what you're doing. But when you have a little bit of nose, like on a four zero or a four six, um, it really just helps get the get the nose of the board up, kind of splitting that water, and then you're easy to transition that board and get it nice and flat, so you're not getting like that jump as the boat is starting and you're starting to get on foil. Um, so. For me, I think the 4.0 is a great size. Uh, the lift boards come with foot straps holes, so you can add some foot straps if you want a little bit more control when you're first learning. Um, some people just use like one in the front just to kind of control the nose a little bit. But um, yeah, it's all just kind of personal preference. But when you're looking for a board out there, don't go too high a volume. I think it's going to be harder to sink for you. And uh, I wouldn't go too short either on the length because that's going to make it a little bit harder to start. So I would start around 4.0 and uh, go from there. 
So if this is your first time ever wake foiling, um, there's a few things I would recommend getting and having uh, in your setup. So um, you first want to talk about, you want to have an impact vest, definitely want to have a flotation device on. Um, I would recommend wearing a helmet uh, in the beginning. You just, you know, when you're first starting, like, yeah, you just kind of know, don't know where the board's going to go until you know how to control it. So uh, I would recommend wearing a helmet. I just want to talk about a couple things here about where to put your feet and how to like have a good stance on the board when you're first learning. So like I've been talking about before, a lot of people when they're first learning, the board's just jumping out of the water f for them. And most of the time it's because they have their foot too far back on the tail, which is like putting weight on the back of the wing, which is going to get that wing to jump up. We want to get this wing nice and level. We want to keep our weight forward. So if you look at where the mast is on my board here, you want to make sure your back foot is in front of that. And then your back foot is up here too. We want to have a narrow stance too. We don't want a super wide stance. With the narrow stance, it's easy to like make small corrections in your body weight and you're going to get a lot of input out of it. If you have your stance super wide, you got to move your body around a lot more to like get input into the board, into the wing. So when we get out there, make sure your back foot is in front of the mass and your front foot is about shoulder width apart right up here on the nose of the board. Okay, so we got our board set up. We're out here in the water ready to go. Now we got to learn the start. So the best way to do it is to push the board under you and uh, get your feet on it and let it kind of float up into your chest. So I'm going to kind of show you the easiest way to learn that. So I'm sitting on the board right now, but if I let it come up to the surface here, basically I just want to hold the board like right here, kind of where my front foot goes. And I want to push the board under the water and put my back foot on. So I'm a goofy footer, so I got my left foot on the tail here and I'm holding the nose of the board down uh, with my hands. As the rope gets tight and we're getting ready to take off, I'm basically just holding the board. The nose is kind of going in the direction we want to go. And as we get there, I'm going to replace uh, my hands with my right foot, my front foot. So I don't know if you can see in the water here, but I'm basically going to put my front foot on the board and now I'm going to let go. And as I let go, I'm going to let my knees bend as much as I can and let that board float up underneath me. And then from this position, this is the easiest way to learn how to get up on the foil. It definitely takes a little bit of practice. You can go out on the lake and just kind of practice sitting on your board and getting into the stance. But if you can learn this, it makes the start a lot easier down the road. Okay, so I got the board sunk under me. I got both hands on the handle. I got my foot up off the tail. And then we're gonna bring that speed up. I'm gonna slowly stand up. I'm gonna use the nose of the board to kind of break the water. But once that nose gets up, I wanna get all my weight on my front foot. I don't want this board wheeling. Now I got the, my weight pretty neutral, a little bit more weight on my front foot, but the board is nice and flat. So now all we need is more speed. So as the boat comes up to speed, you can see the board just takes off automatically without having to change any movement or, or any input into the board. So once you're here, just kind of make sure your feet feel comfortable. You don't need a super wide stance or anything. Um, but yeah, you're kind of standing on top of the mast with your back foot and your front foot's like shoulder width apart like we talked about. So, so now the first thing we're going to do, we're going to come into the wave. As soon as we get into the transition, you're going to see the, the boat starts to like pick up the wing and move. And I have all this slack, which shows that, you know, I'm generating all my speed from the wing. And once you kind of can hold the wave like this, you just want to drop the rope. You don't need to throw it or anything. When you're first learning, just drop the handle and have someone bring it in. And then you're going to be kind of right there on the wave. And I'm trying to stay right here in this corridor, like just inside this smooth water here. And I don't want to go too far outside over here. This is like the most power on the wave where it's not too steep or too flat. So you want to just kind of be in this zone right here. And what you want to think about, if you get too low or you get too like low in the flat and you need some speed, you got to get back up in the transition and pull that wing up to get more speed like this, so. So you wanna to try to just keep it like mid-mast. And when you need speed, you climb transition. And then when you gotta get rid of speed, you gotta take that out into the flats. So eventually we're just gonna start kinda of doing these turns like where we get speed and now we're bleeding off speed. And then we pull back into the transition and you can see I'm not very making big movements at all. I'm just kind of keeping the wing mid mast, but I'm just managing my speed. I go climb the transition to get speed. I go out in the flat water to bleed it off. And then I come back in like this. If I get low, like my tail's dragging like that, I want to pull that wing up 
and trim it out again and that's going to give me some more speed too. So whenever you need speed, you want to pull the wing up and find a little transition to get pushed. So see I'm kind of losing it here. I want to pull that wing up, get a little transition and now I'm back powered up again. So those are kind of like the basics and what you're kind of like looking for when you're first learning it. And yeah, like I said, it's like small movements and uh, you're just using the board to control the wing and then reading the wave as you go. So yeah, so when you're first going, think about kind of staying low on the wave. You don't, you don't need to be high up on the face on any of this stuff. If you have the wing kind of trimmed up at mid-mast, you know, you can still be kind of down here in the lower parts of the transition. And just when you need speed, you just want to pull the wing up higher. But as we start to get better, like we were doing before, we want to start getting these little turns going. So climbing the face for speed, taking it out here. And this is the move we want to do. You can kind of start initiating that stuff with your upper body. As I go out, I want to like open my, my shoulders, close my shoulders. And anytime you feel like front foot pressure or anything, you know, you want to just put weight on the nose. You definitely want to just be relaxed and let your, let your lower body kind of follow your upper body as you turn these shoulders to like make these turns. And that's kind of the secret. And then as you get better, you know, you can get more speed, bigger bottom turns, more aggressive. But the boat's the perfect playground to like learn all of this stuff. It's an endless wave. And uh, yeah, you can have a lot of fun out here learning how to boil. One of the things that a lot of people talk about when they're riding the boat is, how do I go from the first roller to the second roller? And the one skill that you need to know to do that is how to pump. So the best way to do that and to learn how to pump is to just go off the first roller and then back into the first roller at first. But there's a technique that I've like kind of learned how to do to like maximize your speed as you come off the wave so that you can just maintain speed while you're pumping instead of making your own speed uh, with the wing. So the move is you want to climb the transition as high as you can here and you want to turn off the wave and you just want to trim through this little trough right here. This is like kind of like a little dead zone. So you want to get past that and get to the outside where it's flat water and easier to pump. So I'm going to kind of climb this transition here and then I'm going to trim out here and then I'm going to start pumping. And when I'm pumping, I'm just pushing the tail of the board, pulling that wing up to the surface, and then letting it glide. You're really only thinking about trimming that board up or getting that board up. You don't want to be going like this and thinking about doing motion. When you're pumping, you're trying to conserve as much energy as you can so that you can pump longer. But the biggest part is just trimming through this trough. So I'm gonna do that again. I'm gonna climb some transition, trim, and now I'm out in the flats where it's nice and easy to pump. And this is kind of like the first move you want to do is just pumping out off the first roller, pumping out off the first roller, and then coming back into the first roller. All right, so this is kind of the move everyone wants to learn. Going from the first roller to the second roller. We've already learned how to pump. Now we just got to get the technique going to get off this first wave to give us maximum power to get to the second. So what I'm doing first thing, I'm right on this part line. This is the spray coming off the side of the boat and then the clean water on the outside. I want to be on this. I'm going to kind of wiggle my way back as far back as I can so I'm closer to that second roller. And then when it's time to make my move, I pull that wing up, I climb transition, trim through the trough, take that glide, and now I start pumping. As I get to the outside, I want to get my eyes up. I'm looking for the wave I want to get to. So I'm looking right here as I come into the wave, pull that wing up and you're gonna feel that thing drive just like we were on that first roller. So the big thing to think about is getting a good clean exit, coming off the first wave, trimming up through the trough, getting that pump going, and as soon as I'm turning back in to find that second roller, I wanna get my eyes up and find that wave so I can go straight to it. So, got Damo in the water back here. I'm gonna go over a few things on how to set your boat up and how to pull somebody uh, when you're foiling. It's a little different than your wake surfing. Um, so a couple of things here. We wanna bump the speed up. Normally you wake surf around 11 miles an hour. We're gonna foil like around 12, 12 and a half. What that's gonna do is it's gonna make the wave longer so you have more room to do turns and kind of manage your speed when you're back there. Um, 
I have my ballast set at half, um, just like, you know, as opposed to wake surfing, like where you want that wave super big all the time, like on the foil, you just want it nice and clean. Um, so like when we're first getting people out there and stuff, like half ballast, and then I keep the wedge in lift mode. So on the Malibu's, lift is like the smallest, most mellow wake. Um, so that's how we're gonna set it up for demo to, to get started out there. And then we're gonna probably change a few things as we go. Here we go. Ready? All right, so speed control's on. We're going 12-2. Name was on the way back there. And like a couple things you kind of think about is like how you're setting that roller out because, you know, on the foil, you can go back to the back rollers and so you want to think about this wave as being like one big long wave, not just like the first one. So if I'm putting like a little bit of a right turn on that, it's going to kind of all kind of wedge the waves together, which makes the waves bigger as you go back to the second and third and fourth roller as you go back. So I like to go in just a little bit of an arc for whatever side that the surfer's on. You can kind of see how long the wave is, it's not too steep. But you can see here, if I like turn, he's on the right side of the boat. If I turn to the left, it kind of makes the wave a little steeper and a little shorter. And then when I turn into him, the wave gets flatter and more mellow and a little longer. So keep that in mind as you're, as you're pulling people. If you want to be doing like more turns and go wider, like, you know, having the, having the wave be a little bit more mellow by turning into your rider is definitely going to help you. I don't know what else to say. We appreciate you guys. We love you guys. If you didn't learn anything here, I don't know what, but literally just being a part of this and seeing this, I've learned a ton. So, Brian, you're amazing. You're incredibly talented. You're a great human. What would you say to anybody out there that is uh, on the fence to try to foil whatever type of foiling? What would you say? Yeah, I would just say don't give up, you know? It can feel frustrating at times if you're trying to you know, try that next thing or pump out and stuff. But yeah, you put that time in and foiling is the most rewarding feeling in the world and you can learn it all behind the boat. So get out there with your friends and uh, start flying. That's it from the legend himself, Brian Grubb. Thank you so much. Yeah, man. Yeah.